Are you going through a storm? Do you feel the ground underneath you giving way, and you are sinking beneath the load of all you have to bear? This season might come with a lot of confusion. You might feel alone, sad, forgotten, despised, and all those negative emotions that accompany a painful situation. This state can even make you question God's love for you. You've prayed, fasted, sown seed, given a special offering, served in and out of the church, and engaged all the principles you know, yet they seem to yield negative results for you because things keep getting worse instead of better. If that is your state, then this video is for you. This video will show you that God uses this pain to prepare you for greater things. This is God's message to let you know He cares for you beyond what you can imagine. If only you could perceive what He was doing, you would spend the remaining period of your preparation worshipping and singing His praise for the beautiful experience He has in store for you. But before then, one way you can encourage us to bring you more of God's Word is by subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. God bless you as you do so. Thank you. Have you seen gold? diamonds, and other precious stones in their raw form. Maybe you have, but you didn't pay attention because you couldn't afford to get your hands dirty. This does not apply to precious stones alone. Have you seen raw materials used to make most of the things you cherish today? You won't even want to have them around you. Most of them look ugly and give off an offensive odor. You can visit a factory to see these things. It's almost unbelievable when you compare the finished product with the raw material. You'll be stunned to see that most of the things you regard as trash are used to make those things you pay heavily for. That's how your life is. A raw material needs to be in the hands of the right person for it to become what it ought to be. Do you know you can ignore those gems, step on them, or even dispose of them if you find them in your home? Because they are unrefined. They aren't useful or valuable yet. You have the potential to do great things. In fact, beyond what your mind can fathom, those treasures are within you and are yet to be visible. For them to become visible, God will deploy you to use them, and there is a process you have to follow. That process is where you are at the moment. You've already pictured what happens in a factory and how amazing things are made from things that are considered nothing. But take a moment to look at the strain those materials have to go through. The cutting, folding, bending, breaking, flattening, and the list goes on and on. Do you think for a second that those materials are having fun? Obviously, they aren't. But if they ever would become treasures to admire and pay heavily for, they have to endure that process. This principle is clearly stated in the Bible in John 12, 24, very truly. I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The Bible says that if it dies, it produces many seeds. This is the process of manifesting great things. If the seed chooses the easy way out, it will be alone and eventually fade away without relevance. But when it submits to the process of multiplication, it not only produces many seeds but abides forever. Does this mean the process is easy? No, it is not. You can testify to the pain you have to endure right now. The shame of being stigmatized, the burden of failure, the financial constraints, and the toll on your health are all overbearing. But God is saying you should endure because it is a season of preparation to get you ready for great things. The Bible says what God has prepared for you is massive beyond anything your mind can conceive. But He won't just hand them over to you. You need to be ready to have them. It's the period of preparation that'll make you ready and able to manage them well when you receive them. When the pain goes away, and you enter your place of rest, you will know how to preserve all you have. Can you give your children uncooked food? Just ask because they are hungry and pestering you for food. You definitely wouldn't. You know the consequences of them eating uncooked food are far greater than any hunger they might have at the moment. God is not making you wait because He hates you. In fact, it's the very opposite. 
He is doing everything because he loves you. The Bible says, He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Now answer the question, the God who can give you his only begotten son, what do you think is too big for him to give you or too impossible to do for you? Is it the job, spouse, child, connection, or healing that he can't give you? Far from it. It seems he is taking too long because you have to be ready. It might be a season of hurt, pain, and betrayal for you. You wonder why you have to go through it. It is for God to teach you forgiveness. Someone you believed in so much might disappoint you in a way that stings greatly. God is using it to teach you to depend solely on Him. For every loss you've suffered, pain you have to bear, or difficult situation you have to go through, God has something He wants to get out of it. And there is always something greater for you when the season of preparation is complete. Rather than complaining, murmuring, and playing the victim, you need to start paying attention to what God is doing. This will help you understand and align so you don't miss the preparation. You can miss the preparation, and you'll prolong your period of preparation, making the pain last longer than God planned it to. Despite the pain, you are not just to sit in it and hope someday God will remember you. You have to have the right disposition to go through the process successfully and be prepared to receive the great things waiting at the end of the tunnel. These verses clearly show what you need to do to partner with God in your preparation process. 2 Corinthians 4, 16-18 Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. 17 For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. 18 So we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. These verses start by saying, we do not lose heart. This is the first thing you need to pay attention to. This is not a time for you to become discouraged, sad, depressed or feel like a victim. Rather, it is a season for you to understand that you are stepping higher and moving to greater heights as you follow through the process God is taking you through. It might look like nothing is working for you, or your life is at a standstill, and you're not making any progress, whereas everyone around you is giving testimony and moving forward. But what is happening within you is greater than anything you can imagine. God is working on your heart your mind, and every part of you to align you with a greater purpose. Don't lose heart. The pain is not forever. It is a season that will pass away sooner than you can imagine once you align with what God is doing. Now, when it passes away, it's launching you to a higher dimension, to a higher place of greater glory. So keep your eyes on the goal. Keep your eyes on what God is doing. Keep your eyes on where God is taking you and don't allow the momentary inconvenience to push you out of God's will. Imagine an athlete, for example. The process of preparing for a great event is not always easy. It comes with a lot of constraints that would affect their time, their body, their meeting structure, their sleeping structure, their mind, and every part of them. They keep working out, preparing themselves to be in the best state physically, emotionally, psychologically and mentally to run the race successfully. This preparation might be for months or even years, but they keep at it. They don't give up until they eventually achieve their goal. The goal is always the gold medal. Even on the day of the race, it still doesn't end because they have to go through the race and finish it. Every preparation they have made comes into play at that moment, and then they start running. While running, they do not mind the physical inconvenience they feel. They keep at it until they eventually get to the finish line. Then they receive that reward, and all the pain they've gone through and all the unbearable things they had to bear becomes like nothing because they eventually have the reward. During this period, the athlete works with a coach who puts them through what they need to do and what they need not to do. The coach is often more mature and experienced than the athlete. Any athlete who follows the coach's strategy judiciously will often emerge as a winner. So, 
If you desire to be a winner in life, then you need to follow God as He leads you. No matter what path He is taking you, know that it is for your good and will lead you to the best destination, so you need to follow Him. The first thing you must put in place is your complete trust and confidence in God. Athletes cannot work with a coach they do not trust. A lack of trust in the ability of that coach will make it impossible for them to follow some instructions that might not be conventional. They will argue and complain, and eventually, the coach might get frustrated and leave them to do things on their own. But you do not want God to leave you to figure out life on your own because that can be a very dangerous spot. You cannot trust God if you do not have a strong personal relationship with Him. And this lack of trust is going to make the season a much more difficult one for you. That is why you need to seek a personal relationship with God. This is beyond your going to church, reading your Bible, or even praying. It's deeper than all those activities. It's a relationship you share with God where you relate to Him as the caring Father that He is to you. You spend time with Him and time with His Word to understand His plan and program for you. Spending time with God will give you perspective on what is going on. A lot of people think that spending time with God is all about complaining and telling God everything wrong. No, it is not about that at all. Spending time with God in this context is more about staying in His presence and allowing Him to breathe into you. The more time you spend in His presence, the more you understand what is going on and what He wants you to do. There is always an assignment in your pain, and there is always a reason behind the pain. When you spend time with God, you'll be able to understand that reason, and you will be able to work along with what God is doing. In this season, the devil, your adversary walking about looking for whom to devour, is not at rest at all. He will bring all sorts of lies to you just to discredit God. When you start feeling like you're going through the pain because God hates you or because of punishment for whatever you've done, or when you start having doubts and fears about the authenticity of the power of God, you know definitely that is a sign that the devil is at work trying to hinder what God is doing. The devil's all-time agenda is always to alter whatever God is doing. He did it in the Garden of Eden and even tried it when Jesus was on earth. It is your responsibility to not allow him to prevail over your mind. Rather than meditating on the lies of the devil, focus on the promises of God for you. The Word of God is God himself, and if you've not come to the realization of this reality, you might not really know who God truly is, and because of this, you might fall for the lie of the devil. When you sit in the Word to study and meditate on it, the Word of God not only transforms you, it gives you understanding. This understanding of what is going on and the promises of God for you will make you know what God is doing. It also brings light into your life. This light is the presence of God that dispels darkness and makes it possible for you to rejoice even in pain. The Bible says, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. When the Word of God dwells in you, you'll be able to rejoice even in the pain. This joy is one of the things that helped you get the greater things God is preparing you for. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. What you need to do in this season is to rejoice. The present situation around you might make you look like an unserious person when you rejoice, but you understand the reason for your joy. Joy helps you get the rewards of all the seeds you have sown during time of pain and hardship. A heart of joy will surely be that of gratitude. Don't look at or focus on the things that are not working. Keep your mind on all the blessings you've received from God already, and continue to thank Him for them. This season is a time when God is working on you, so you shouldn't be surprised when He gives you unusual instructions. While you are nursing the pain of betrayal, God might ask you to start praying for the person who hurt you. While you are battling debt, God might ask you to give to another person who might even look more financially stable than you are. All this is to teach you certain things. Your obedience will determine whether you will get the greater things God is preparing for you. 
The question is, will you obey him no matter how inconvenient the instruction is? When you trust God, obeying him becomes easy because you know he is looking out for you and will not let anything harm you. Prayer is one powerful way to build your relationship with God, align your heart to what he is doing, and receive comfort to endure the pain. It also launches you to the higher level God is preparing you for. Let us pray. Gracious Father, I know your thought towards me is one of peace and not evil to give me an expected end. I know everything I have to go through in life is because of your love for me. It's because you are looking out for me and want me to be in the best position to receive the best from you. I pray that you help me trust you more, not waver during the storm, and not believe that you do not care about or have abandoned me. Right now, I pray that you will help me learn all the lessons that I need to know during this period of pain. Help me align myself with what you're doing so that I can follow through on your journey. I pray for grace to be strong, courageous, and resilient. Help me to not look at the things around me but keep my focus on you and what you are doing. Help me to know that the things that I can see are temporal, but what you are preparing for me that I cannot see right now are eternal. Help me to meditate on your word day and night, to spend my time seeking to know you more and focusing my energy on building a relationship with you rather than worrying and complaining. Lord, you have promised in your word that when a seed falls and dies, it produces more seeds. Father, as I have surrendered myself to go through this process, you are taking me to help me produce the right seeds. You promised in your word that what you are preparing me for is beyond what any eye has seen or mind has imagined. I believe your word. I pray that you make my life a sign and a wonder for everyone to know that you are God who stands by his word. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you're still watching, you are part of the Christian family. Endeavor to share the video with someone and subscribe to the channel.